Okay, so we are live. Um, got our sound working. And this is the kickoff of our Spooktober crafting. Um, tonight we are going to be working on what will probably not be a one-time project. It's probably going to last a couple weeks as we work on this. But we will be making a Getty Bear out of a um, fairly inexpensive Halloween decoration that I found at Walmart. And we probably won't get to the painting portion of it today. Um, we're probably just going to be doing the sewing portion, but it's all going to be hand sewn, just as so many of my projects are. Um, mostly because I can't figure out how to work my sewing machine. Sorry. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and swap over to our screen. And before I get into turning this into a daddy bear, I am participating in Inktober this year. I've been participating in various drawing challenges every year for the past several. Um, this, by the way, is my uh, crafting desk setup. So, yay, I'm finally able to access it. Um, it probably won't be quite so tight and awkward once I've had a chance to... Uh, finish clearing out the space. Right now it's, there. this is a uh, ball that my kids used to play with. Somehow ended up in my room. Um, but there's various uh, things all around me. I'm kind of stuck in this space, which is why I'm glad that we're not getting to the actual uh, painting part today, because I can't get up to go get paint water. Um, okay, so... Uh, again, I am uh, I am participating in Inktober, and so real quick, I'm going to show off. Uh, each week, I'll do a showing off of what I did the previous week. So, prompt one, Gargoyle. Uh, he has a very menacing scowl, even if he uh, has butterfly wings. They don't quite look as gargoyle as I meant, but still. Um, second prompt, scurry. I spend so freaking long drawing those bricks, one at a time. I need to find a better way to do it. Um, and the, the text on there is too small to read on the camera, but it says, I consider myself a brave man, officer, but when I saw that thing scurry up the wall of the high school and turn its damned head around backwards, well, I'll be washing these pants later. Okay. Just wanted to show those off, uh, since it's only, you know, two days into the month. I've only done the two. Uh, but next week I should have a full seven to show off. Okay, so, needle and thread. Did not grab a threading hang tool. I'll, I'll regret that later. And everyone's favorite source of uh, sewing supplies, Royal Dance Time. Full of fabric scraps. Um, now they did not. I did not uh, cut them that neatly. They actually came as a pre uh, pre bundled thing. And then this is our base for our daddy bear. Cute little uh, <clears throat> dead teddy bear. Um, but we're gonna turn him into something a bit more gruesome for Halloween. Um, so first things first, we are going to take some of this red fabric and we're going to tuck it up inside him to see how it looks as if there's flesh inside or not. Um, because in the end he is going to have uh, fur over a lot of it, well, fur <laughs> over a lot of him, uh, but then he's going to have portions that are visibly torn up, ragged, so we want to make certain we've got something that looks like meat inside there, even if he will be stuffed. Now, for an actual teddy bear, um, we've got some choices on colors. Uh, I was thinking do something more traditional, you know, but this yellow 
is kind of gross looking, kind of gruesome looking. And I'm kind of thinking, hey, that'll add to the, uh, to the... <clears throat> oh, right, I moved my trash can. Okay, I'll just have to set loose ends. This is all very, um, very rough cut at some points. So you'll see a lot of these loose, stray edges, and I just realized I didn't grab my scissors either. Uh, I am smart today. Okay. So, uh, that is caramel apple soda, by the way. Getting myself in the fall mood. I just remembered I've got scissors in this drawer. They're not fabric scissors, but they'll do for now. I mean, we're supposed to have this thing look a bit ragged and torn, so it's okay. Alright, so... I need to decide how much of this I'm going to need for each part. So... You know what? Actually, we're not going to do that. He's going to be a bit of a patchwork there. Oof. You can see how these scissors are already causing frayed ends. That's okay. He's supposed to look battered and frayed and as if he's uh, had a pretty rough life and or unlife. So, we're going to start with one of his legs. Too worried about it looking good. Because again, he's not supposed to look good. He's supposed to look pretty ragged. I do want to give myself a bit of extra room though. Not too much, but enough room that I can sew this in a tube and then slip it over his leg and then use some stuffing I've got to actually sew it together. This should give me enough room. If I have to stretch it over his feet, that's okay. Uh, mostly I'm doing it this way because I really don't want to try and sew into that tiny, tiny space that is him. Okay. And my edges are going to be a bit rough and ragged. That is okay. Again, he's not supposed to look posh and fixed up. I am going to use something to hold the fabric in place so it doesn't slip as I'm sewing. Some people get uh, fancy tools to do that. I get clips that I got for Easter one year and never used. Okay. And we are using a dark blue thread. I would have used black, but um, in this case, I don't really need it since most of the stitches will be hidden. Uh, but I wanted them to be where they'll at least partially stand out. Because, again, he's not a good quality bear. He is one who has seen life in all of its trials. Now, the real fun will be when I reach the point where it's time to sew all of the disparate bits of his uh, fur and stuffing together. And I know I've said this before on stream, uh, but it's much easier to put the eye of the needle over your thread I really should have grabbed my needle better. Can't on the other side of this partition. And again, I can't get up. <laughs> right, you know 
know what? He's not going to get... Normally, I do double strand with sewing, but with the fact that I grabbed the tiniest freaking needle, I'm going to have to just do a single strand. Because my sewing kit that has everything else, including all of my other needles, is also not over here. There we go. And he's still going to get double strand, just not quite the same way that I was intending initially. I guess how I normally sew is quadruple strand instead of double. Okay. That's okay. And since his, uh, this will be on the inside of his body, I'm not too worried about clipping my yarn, uh, my, uh, not yarn ends, my, uh, uh, thread in short, but I am, as always, triple knotting to ensure that it stays knotted. Okay, now... Get to the actual sewing. This, by the way, is not from a pattern or anything. I'm making all of this up as I go. Unsurprising, knowing me. We're not going to do anything fancy, just a simple blanket stitch. It's my preferred stitch for just about everything. So we go through, we wrap the yarn tail around, we make certain it doesn't get caught on the bunny ears, and there we go, that's stitch two. And we're just going to do this all the way along. Blanket stitch is always my favorite stitch. It's one of the easiest stitches that I know that still has a relatively uh, firm hold to it. Like I use blanket stitch because it holds things together. Um, not because it's like super neat or super fancy. Y'all have seen my stuff. I don't do fancy. You're lucky if I do neat. Right. So, I'm going to pull this up just a bit. I also have a set of like tiny, tiny clothespins I could use for this. Um, but again, they're outside my reach right now. The joy of working in very small spaces. Sometimes your chair is put in a place where you just can't move that chair until you are done with what you're doing. But that's okay. I am fine with working in small in fairly confined spaces. My, uh, one of my bedrooms when I was a teenager was actually the utility room before they had moved everything to a different art part of the house. Um, so it used to be the, uh, room that held the washer and dryer and then became my bedroom because up until that point in that particular house, my bedroom had been 
the I guess I called it what well I would have called it the library if it had been you know how things were at the house that I grew up in before then it was a room that was kind of a centralized location and everybody walked through it constantly to get to the only bathroom in the house and it had bed it had doors leading to the kitchen the bathroom and direct into my parents' bedroom. Did not like that at all. Um, it meant I had zero privacy ever. Um, so the minute my brother was like, hey, I'm moving out of these two rooms, one was a utility room and one was a hallway, and he had turned both into an actual bedroom combined, just a long skinny bedroom. Uh, once he was like, I'm moving out into the garage, I'm turning it into a room. A room, mostly because my dad had said, while well, you're in my house, you'll follow my rules, and my brother had said, okay, I'll live outside then, in the garage. Um, and when that didn't work, my brother actually converted the, uh, the root cellar into his own bedroom, because we had an outdoor, I guess it would have been a storm shelter, not a root cellar. Um, in Oklahoma, those serve double purpose. You know, generally you turn your, uh, you use your root cellar as your storm shelter. Um, but my brother went, okay, then I won't live in the house at all. I'll live in this, uh, root cellar. And he did. Um, there were a lot of times when there were fights between me and my dad because of the whole dad expected to be followed uh, purely by authority of I'm your parent and I'm paying the house household bills and my brother didn't want to follow those rules but the minute he moved out I was like I'm taking over this room not the hallway you guys can keep that to, your, to use for whatever but I want a room that is mine that is private It also had, that utility room also had a door to the outside, which was nice. Um, because I could go out at any time, including in the middle of the night, and just, uh, I would actually sit on top of the storm shelter and draw or write. Um, I had a battery-powered electric typewriter that was meant to be used for, my dad had had it for, uh, I'm not even sure what he used it for initially, but I used it to write many, many short stories, and many, many, I've actually got, I, I was doing a lot of cleaning in here to get to the point I could use this crafting area, um, yesterday, and I ended up coming across a thing that I had written when I was a teenager, um, it was effectively X-Men fan fiction, let's face it. Um, why is it that now that I'm streaming, everybody messages me? Seriously, just everyone. Right. I'll deal with those later. Anyway, um... It's basically a self-insert X-Men fanfic, except it doesn't have any of the X-Men in it. It's based in the world of, or one similar, uh, but, yeah, I found it, and it was, uh, it's an older piece, definitely. <laughs> um, it was one that I was so proud when I wrote it that I took it to the... I was not an ink, a senior yet, uh, but I took it to the teacher that taught senior English to have her proofread, and she only got two pages into it and then was like, nope, nope, you keep switching tenses mid-sentence sometimes, so that's going to have to stop before I go any further. Alright, I'm just slipping this on.
making certain that it still fit as is, does. Okay, now, I'm not taking the needle out because, next thing, I'm making his foot. So, that's actually pretty much the right size already. I'm going the wrong direction with it, but oh well. So what we're going to do is I'm going to sew this independently and then attach this to it. And what I'll do is I'll go down this way and then sew to this coming back the other way. If that makes sense to people. It does to me. Which admittedly doesn't say much because I make sense to myself all the time when I shouldn't. I mean, it would probably make more sense to sew. Oh well. I'm committed to this course of action. Okay, I can just flip it around and sew it that way. That works. It works. Awkwardly, but it works. And this time I'm not clipping it because... I've got that awkward end over here that is not going to fit together no matter what I do. So I'm just kind of not clipping it because that's just going to annoy me because it's not going to fit right. So, ow! And this is why you should use a thimble. I never do. And I always regret it. Actually, I take that back. I use a thimble when sewing patches onto something. Because those patches... Most of them are actually meant to be ironed on, not uh, sewn on. And therefore they have the iron-on backing, which is really difficult to get a needle through. Um, I tend to use a denim needle for those because it's the only needle that works right. But I kind of want that ragged end because I won't be sewing things flat for the foot. I'm going to turn these so it does give me that pocket because I want that foot to fit. My other idea that I was considering was just cutting a bunch of these into th thin strips and then... Uh, using Mod Podge to attach them to the body so it looked more like a mummy bear. But, I don't know. The idea of turning him into an actual teddy bear with bones and flesh inside is just really appealing to me. Don't know why. It is. Probably because I'm weird and morbid. If I were being smart, I would have done something like making certain that these are going to align properly. But I'm not going to do that, because I'm not smart. I am somebody who just kind of does what I want and hope it turns out. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't.
this would be like mm, a non-crafty parent's first attempt to make a teddy bear or something like that. Um, you know, just take a living bear and then uh, sew it into a set of uh, cloth, keep wanting to say yarn, um, and hope for the best, you know. If you are a parent and you are making a teddy bear for your child for the first time, please don't sew a living bear into a uh, set of yarn, a uh, set of cloth. It won't end well for you, or the bear, or your child. Most likely, your child will end up an orphan, the bear will end up traumatized, and you will end up dead. Or the bear will end up dead as well, because, you know, it killed a human, therefore it becomes a dangerous animal, and therefore it has to be put down. So don't do that to you, or your child, or the bear. If you want to do something like what I'm doing, feel free to get your own little daddy bear from the store. They are probably available anywhere that uh, incorrect ana anatomically incorrect skeletons are sold. Um, so we're going to turn this around and go back the other way. I'm gonna do. Now you might notice, depending on which direction I'm sewing, uh, I change which way I wa I wrap the fab the you know, yarn. Um, that's just kind of a me thing. It is something I do. I also, on going back the other way, try to get my stitches in between the previous stitches rather than going into the same spots. Um, I do that because to me it feels like a tighter uh, line of stitches and therefore more secure and less likely to have a catastrophic break happen that results in having to re-sew. Um, I'm running out of, out of thread, so here in a few I'm going to have to uh, close the ends and get another length to work with, which is fine. It gives me a chance to show you guys how I always close those off. Okay, so I'm going to do it here because I've got a nice open spot for it. Alright, let's start looking at this camera. Okay, so what I always do to close off, I do it kind of like how you do a French knot. I wrap three times. French knot is two, by the way, not three. Don't, uh, don't make French knots the way I do. Mine are always really, really thick. But they look good to me. So I wrap it three times like that, do it again in a slightly different spot. And then you can go back and go under some of the previous stitches and do it one more time, which is what I'm doing. because I want this to stay absolutely secure. Right now we can trim. And pull that off. Set this down. But we're making progress. Got to remember to drink my soda.
some of the other projects I'm planning for this month. Um, I'll have to look and see how many Sunday or, uh, Sundays there are in October. But I've got a uh, little plastic figure that's pre-made for um, it, it's a figure blank that you're supposed to color with markers I need to get different markers than I currently have uh, but this particular figure blank has a triangle shaped head so I will be turning that figure into Pyramid Head from Silent Hill. At least that's the plan. Now whether or not I can actually pull that off remains to be seen. I'm not the best at drawing. I'm working on it. I'm definitely not the best at painting. Um, just have to see how it goes. But, that's one of the plans. I've also got a plastic skeleton unicorn um, that I'm going to paint and possibly modify with some cloth similar to the Getty Bear, uh, but not quite the same, because no need to repeat, you know. Um, there will be at least one point where uh, my kids join us on stream as we carve pumpkins. Um, so we'll just have to see how much I've got time for. If this turns out to take enough time that I'm, it takes up two full streams, um, then I might have to work on parts of it off stream. And just show the finished product once it's done. Or I might have to cut some of the planned things. I don't think I'll have to cut Pyramid Head out because that's going to be a uh, hopefully a single time thing. But we'll just have to see. I'm hoping Pyramid Head doesn't take me like two streams as well. I don't want it to be like the Bone Fairy, which it was pretty much the only thing that I did for the entire month of October. Um, though it turned out really well. I really wish I could find it again. It disappeared during the move. I know roughly where it is, though. Um, I just have to unpack some boxes that, uh, yeah haven't made it to their end points yet. Okay. So basically we're building a little teddy bear that is going to go around him, but it's not going to be the full teddy bear. Um, it's, at one point, like I said, it's going to have some exposed rib or other bones um, there's going to be the red flesh visible inside that is probably going to get attached using uh, Mod Podge rather than actually sewn though depending on how it goes I might stuff uh, I might make a little sack out of the red and stuff it and then just tuck it up inside him. Um, if I do that, I will definitely want to, like, use black ink to delineate different organs. Um, but we'll see. I don't like to, to plan too much on things, because I don't. if I do plan too much and I end up going off plan, it can throw me off pretty badly. Um, but I at least want to get a rough idea of what I'm going to be doing. So. Oops. 
since I do, as always, have other stuff that needs doing, I'm planning to go for one and a half to two hours on today's stream. Um, I can't do a three, four hour stream because, uh, let's see, it's 6.30 now, and I start work at 10. So, yeah. But, you know, one and a half to two hours, that should totally be manageable and should get me far enough that I can at least show you bits of the product as it's going to look in the end. Not the whole thing. There is no way I'm sewing this entire thing in that short a time, but we can get closer. Heck, I'll be happy if I finish this little uh, leg, flip it around, put it on him and it fits, and I can say, okay, now, from here, and show off the next part. Um, now, I actually own some handcrafted teddy bears. Um, they were uh, made for me by my mom. I can't wait until I've got my room set up in a way that I can actually have that on display. Um, I don't have the gray one that was covered in a soft minky fabric, mostly because I loved that one to death. Uh, but I still have the green one that was in velvet, and I still, you know, I still love the, uh, the soft material of it, you know, and the color. I, green has been my favorite color for ages. My mom, um, she was convinced that my favorite color was pink. So when it came time, one moment, muting myself for a second. Okay, sorry about that. <sighs> okay, sorry. I had to deal with a munchkin. He does not like white light. It hurts his eyes some. Um, but that means that he is absolutely convinced since his bedroom has a yellow bulb instead of white, it means obviously we can change what color the bulbs are, or change what color of light each bulb that we have emits. Thing is, these are all LED lights, so if they can change, um, we would need some like a, a special uh, remote, effectively, that would allow us to do that. And we were not provided with that remote when we moved in. So, 
he, he is absolutely convinced if he just pokes at the lights enough, it'll all change. Um, Daddy here is very eager to get his new foot on, but Daddy's going to have to wait on that. Stop trying to steal the yarn, or thread. You can tell what I normally work with. Okay, so boys apparently figured it out. But it required having this step stool in the book. Which I actually need that step stool. Because I've got to hang uh, some things up on the wall, and I haven't been able to because I'm too short to reach where to hang them. Apparently, since they didn't give us the remote, it's just, uh... a matter of getting to the actual light fixture. I vastly prefer white light to yellow, but... I also prefer sunlight over anything else, because I will sleep in sunlight. Sunlight is so nice. Just cuddle up in a puddle of sun like the cats do. Okay. But we are making progress on our little daddy bear's foot. Once I get this added, it's going to be like a little Christmas stocking, basically. Or I should say, until I get it added. I've crocheted Christmas stockings. They're not hard. The hardest part is the uh, actual foot part. Well, the heel of it, I guess I should say. Now, because he is going to be a poorly made teddy bear, uh, the seam is actually going to be on the top of his foot and leg, instead of the back. And that's at least in part because that's the way I'm uh, sewing it. But we're going to say that, you know, the parent that made it didn't know better. He just wants love, right? He's just a little bear who wants love. And possibly your soul. Okay. Right, we are reaching the point where we need to switch tactics a bit. Okay. So, put loose that thread that was hanging off. Alright. So to make this work, I'm going to have to sew this end to this end, and then go all the way around, being careful not to sew the out the uh, sides together that are not the same sides or not. I wish I could get my word, my brain, to articulate the words as they're coming out and articulate them the way that I want them to come out. But that's just not happening. So we're just gonna have to deal with me trying to roughly explain what I'm doing. Hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing in the camera. So you'll know even if I can't explain it properly. Um, but basically, the two outer, or the two circles that make up the bear are going to be sewn together, and I'm just going to have to flip things around carefully as I go um, to ensure it works. But 
for right now. We're just going to kind of go with it. The real fun is going to be when I get to the other side and have to start folding it in as I go. I do have to keep an eye on my uh, Discord chat um, because at least one of my friends is kind of going through it, has been for a while. Um, but it means I have to keep an eye out when he's active. Probably why I normally do these streams in the middle of the night. Which, by the way, I can, now that I've got the crafting area set up, do. Uh, because, instead of the light being behind me, the way it is when I set up to do the watercolors, and therefore uh, having to ha only do the stream during the day, so I can use the sunlight from the window, um, or in front of... Mm, poor phrasing again. Um, let's just say it's easier to access the light now. Um, because it's right above me instead of behind or in front of me. So, we'll make it much easier to do streams at any time instead of only being able to do it at certain times. In fact, from my craft room, there is no way that the light from the window can reach over here, so it's entirely through me. start getting very um, awkward. Expect me to stab myself fairly often at this point. Because I'm still sewing from the inside. I'm trying to avoid sewing the two sides together.
I mean, it's all gonna look weird and strange anyway, but that's a good thing, because again, we want our bear to look weird and strange. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot who's going to have to pull out every single one of these stitches because I just realized the way I'm doing this, when I turned it inside out, this seam here, the ragged edges of the fabric, are going to be on the outside. That's what we want the ins the outside to look like. And no, that's... Okay, okay. It's not the end of the world. This is at least part of why I do these streams, because I don't mind if you guys see me screw up. In fact, I want you guys to see me screw up. I want you guys to know crafting isn't perfect. Crafting is not even necessarily easy. Easy enough anyone can do it, but that doesn't mean it's easy, easy. Believe me, some of the most amazing crafters that I know are in a Discord channel that I happen to be in, and I regularly see them going, I just did X amount of this project and then realized I was doing it inside out or upside down or backwards or, you know. <laughs> it is, uh... The problem with knowing what you're doing is the fact that you also know what you're doing wrong. <laughs> Good news, it's going to make it easier in the end. It's going to be easier to sew than what I was trying to do. Or who knows, may make it harder. see these loose strings that do not like what I've been doing, frayed edges of our daddy bear's leg, very frayed now, but it means I'm only working with one side of the uh, bear. Part of me wants to be lazy and just be like, nah, continue as it was. It's fine. Like you said, it was somebody's first attempt at sewing a teddy bear. They screwed up. And then part of me is like, uh uh. They're screwing up and then they're sewing the leg on the inside out. I've got this long tail, and I'm just going to be lazy here, and use this to tie off. Triple knotted 
that. Put this and the yarn ends or thread ends, whatever. This is a very good soda. Okay. Now this means that I've got a much shorter bit of thread that I'm going to be working with. So I will have to probably midway through the leg swap to a longer bit of thread. But that's okay. Really, it is. Just like with the back of an embroidered cross stitch piece, nobody's looking at the back, they're looking at the front. With a, with a uh, sewing project, nobody's looking at the inside, they're looking at the outside. Unless you're sewing like a dress or something like a shirt where they can see the, uh, the outside. Okay. Yeah. I swear if I'm making the exact same mistake I made last time, it feels like I am. I'm going to have to turn it inside out just so I can visualize what I'm trying to do. And I have to sew it with it right side out. Which is weird because I normally don't need to do that. But in this case, I want to make certain that I'm not screwed up. The joy of working with such small pieces of fabric is it can be a real pain to turn them right side out <laughs> once you've done what you're trying to do. So maybe this will be like a blessing in disguise type situation. I doubt it, but maybe, maybe. Okay. So I'm having to force the entire foot through the tube of the leg. doing it, it was going to show on the outside, so, okay, hold those pieces of fabric together, and then sew them in such a way that the ends stay on the end. Snag 
Yeah. We're gonna hold the yarn bits together. I keep saying yarn. I mean fabric. tighter than I'd meant, but it'll work. I know there's a way to do this from the inside, but I, for the life of me, I couldn't figure out how for right now. And since it's not supposed to look the greatest anyway, I don't really care if it's a bit ratty. So, a bit ratty, not completely bizarre. Nobody would make this mistake ratty. <laughs> Obviously, this part was sewn after Mom got went out and got a little bit of, uh, whatever the parent was that sewed it, went out and got a little bit to drink because they were frustrated with the project. I originally got this fabric, these uh, pre-cut yarn, or pre-cut fabric bits, um, because I didn't realize how uh, loose the weave on them was, and how easily they frayed, and I was planning to, like, sew them together to make multicolored masks. Obviously, I didn't use them for that once I realized that, hey, this is really, um, really loose fabric, it's not going to give me a nice tight, you know, microbe proof weave, uh, which then it turned out that the cloth masks, while they were useful, were not, um, they were not going to prevent the spread of the latest variants. Uh, that's when my family switched to wearing N95s and I stopped sewing masks constantly. I've still got tons of fabric, though, that I got specifically for the purpose of sewing masks, so... Gotta figure out what I'm gonna do with that in the future. Most of it is in the form of fat quarters. So, I can easily turn them into, like, pillows and stuff, or pillowcases, I should say. I should be able to finish this without having to turn it inside, right side out, or inside out again. Mistake. 
I don't think they need to turn the foot itself inside out, thankfully. So, I can just turn the leg. Inside out, so that it folds down over the foot. So my fingers especially. Okay. Now, put folding this down. I don't know why, I just could not get that to so the way I wanted it to. I couldn't get my brain to concentrate, I guess. Who knows? I took my meds today, I swear I did. It's a constant question in this house, Mason, did you take your meds today? Yes, yes I did. For once. Okay. Right. Oh, this should make things much easier once I've got it. There we go. Okay. Why didn't I do this in the first place? Who knows? Least of all me. You can see we're switching whether we're going from the foot into the leg or the leg into the foot at this point. Uh, but that's okay. It doesn't really matter too much if you switch directions like that. It's not like crocheting where if you swap directions uh, midway down the line, you end up uh, you end up uncrocheting. <laughs> I've done that before, and then I've also had projects where I've ended up awkwardly, like, left-hand crocheting, which, as you can see from watching me, my right hand's dominant. Um, I can use my left for a lot of things, including crocheting. It's just not easy at all. Um, I can write with both hands, though. not as easy to read when I write with the left, but I can do it, and it is readable as long as I print cursive with the left, is, well, my cursive isn't the most readable in the first place, um, but cursive with the left is just terrible. This is so much easier. This is why every now and then I go, why does my brain work the way it does? Because I will end up doing something that takes me three times the effort for half the, resu the result. And it takes me like multiple tries to figure out where I went wrong and why I'm not getting that result <laughs> despite the multiple amounts of effort I've put in. This is one of those times. go back up this seam on the back of the leg, but I'm going to be very careful not to sew the foot to the seam. Um, 
if I did, it would kind of undo a lot of the hard work we've just put in. And so I've squished the foot down so that it is not right against this seam. We're going to go back up the back of the leg. Probably not going to go the full way, but we'll see. Mostly I'm going until I run out of uh, thread. I'm sure any actual seamstress watching me do something like this would be going, what are you doing? Those stitches are so uneven because they are. I've seen tricks to make very ni nice, tight, even stitches, um, but on most of my projects, I'm not going to use that much effort. The masks I did, but that's because the masks were literally to prevent the spread of a virus. That was the goal, at least. It didn't work too well. Um, well, it, it did because the only pe person in my entire household that ever got it was one of my sons. Um, but that was after the variant that went straight through the cloth masks was put in. It was, uh, you know, active. So I don't blame the masks. Not their fault. They did a very good job for a very long time. I'm getting close to the point where I'm going to have to stop because I'm out of thread. Trying to get a little bit further up the leg though. stitches and oof. one two yeah we're only gonna be able to do the two there that's fine we got very far. Further than I expected to get. Okay, let's drop that there. Now let's flip this foot around, put it on our daddy bear, and see how it looks. That's not too bad looking. It'll look better once it's stuffed, but, you know, one thing at a time, right? In fact, I can turn it just a little. Now it fits its foot a little better. So, 
Next question. Do we do that again for the other foot? Or do we leave that one bone? My real goal is to have this arm bone and his chest open along his ribs to about here. So it looks like something pulled all the flesh or skin off of this part. And then haven't quite decided what I'm going to do with the head yet. I do know I will be painting at least one of the eyes. Possibly both. We'll see. But I think the eyes are going to require me to uh, do something akin to paper mache uh, just with fabric. Okay. I think I'm going to do this arm now because it's going to be a lot quicker and simpler than pretty much everything else. it can be done in one piece. I won't have to sew on another piece. Uh, I'm just going to get some thread. There we go. And nobody has to use the same methods I do. If you figure out a better way to do this, feel free to use it. I'm just kind of poking around seeing what I can do and seeing where it gets me. If you are hand sewing, I highly recommend remembering to grab your needle threader. Because threading a needle with that one is a pain in the tail. There's no need to put yourself through that. Do not be me. Work smarter, not harder. if we can get an arm done before we want to straighten. I can get this to Grr. There we go, triple mud. Okay. Now I did notice this stuff seems to fray a lot less going one direction than it does going another. Which, I mean, that's true of just about any fabric. But I'm going to try to work in the direction that frays less. around that big old mitten paw. It does. Okay, good.
It's not a bad idea, but it's also way too much effort. Hello, Stephanie868. Thank you for joining the stream. You're getting to watch my uh, Spooktober crafting stream. Currently, we are turning a uh, plastic Halloween decoration that I just got at one of the local stores into a hopefully much more gruesome looking plastic Halloween decoration. Um, we are taking this teddy bear skeleton. We are sewing an actual teddy bear around it. Um, and then we will stuff parts of it and other parts will be left with exposed bone to show just how... Uh, how well loved our bear was. And how strangely made. <laughs> and I'm fairly certain this doesn't need to be said, but again, do not actually attempt to make a teddy bear by sewing an animal into your cloth. Also, don't be like me and, you know, muck up the uh, sewing so you have to undo it and redo it, like, twice. But that's me. That's just kind of the things I do. If it gets bad enough that I go and buy two steaks at the grocery store, cook one until it's blue, then eat it while cooking the other to a more uh, done amount, then I'll know that's what happened. Because that's what happens any time that I let it go too long. And I end up eating both steaks. about the hour and a half mark. I will probably do 
some of the sewing on this project uh, off stream but it's going to be things like the uh, the other foot and leg Uh, so it'll be pretty much the exact same process that was used for the first part. I'm not going to work on the body or the head off stream because I do want people to see how I'm doing it. So the foot does, which means I can just turn this into another foot and leg. I guess I'll do the arms later. The paws apparently are bigger than the feet. Go figure. Okay. In that case, let's go ahead and finish up this one. And then we'll go ahead and end our stream for the night. Um, I do want to thank everyone who came out. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed. I thank you for the follow again, Stephanie. Uh, Eight six eight. But I'm really looking forward to how this ends up coming out once it's all done. So I do want to thank everyone who came out to the stream. I hope that you guys all had fun watching me muck around with cloth. Uh, there will be. Next time, uh, I am planning to have some paint available because we will work on the Debbie Bear, but we will also work on the Unicorn Skeleton, um, which I don't think is going to have the cloth uh, as much, if at all. Uh, possibly I might use the cloth to help make a rather tatty mane and tail to cover the uh, bone mane and tail that have already been built into the skeleton. Um, but I hope that everyone has a beautiful rest of your week. I hope that you guys all stay safe. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. And I'll see you next time.